Welcome to the SQL automation with triggers. In the last video we covered SQL triggers, so now I can skip all those nitty gritty details and provide you with scenario that you might find useful on a real job. So without further ado, let's jump right into my screen. Our hypothetical scenario is the following. We have table of our invoices. Suppose we want to log log of changes when the customer pays their invoice, all done automatically using triggers. So the principle here will be the following. Whenever the is pay column of this invoices table will be updated and changed from false to true, then we want to create a new entry, new entity in our new table, which we will create called paid invoices and try the time of the change and invoice and the customer information of that paid invoice, if it makes sense. So I hope it will be in a moment. For now, let's create a new table called paid invoices with the ID as integer and it will be generated always as identity and then the invoices ID, customer name and paid on, which is same step, where invoice ID and customer name will be the same values as here. So we'll just um, copy and paste them to keep track in our log. Let's create, uh, as you can see, create a table query return. Let's see here in our tables, if I refresh, now we have our new table, paid invoices. Let's uh, quickly check that uh, it is created well. You can see it's an, an empty table, of course, and it has all of the values of the columns and their types. So that's good. Cool. Now, here is a sample function for populating this new table. So I am using create or replace. You can just use create if you are creating this log function for the first time, which I will do right now. But if you have this already existing in your database, you can also use create or replace. But beware that it will rewrite existing function. As we learned already, we return trigger our PLPG SQL language, the body. And here is the interesting part. As I already gave you a hint on this local trigger variables, right? Here is our logic if, then, and we end if. Basically, it's like an OP if else statement, but in SQL. If our new updated value on is paid, let's see if here is paid, we update any of these values, is paid, and old value is paid of the same column are not equal. So if we have the value that was changed, and it is really easy if it is boolean operator that takes only true or false, so th there is in principle no need to write this and new is paid equal true. But if you have maybe a string or an integer that can take an infinite number of possible values, right? Then you can also add if these values are not equal between each other and is paid is equal true to be sure that this invoice is paid. Then what do we do? We insert this value insert into a table of paid invoices, which we created just now, a moment ago. We insert the values invoice ID, and customer name and paid on. In this invoice ID, customer name and paid on. We invoice the old value of invoice ID. All the new, we don't really change in invoice ID or in customer name here. So it does not matter if it's old or new. But for example, here we will just use old invoice ID, then old customer name for customer name and for paid on our now. It is a time step uh, reserved keyword for SQL to show that it is right now whenever a change occurs. Then we close our and if, return new value and uh, we basically run this. As you can see, our log create function query returns successfully in 55 milliseconds. Okay. Now we go to the second step, which is create trigger. Let's call it invoices paid trigger. And we fire it before an update on table invoices. Remember on our table invoices. For each row, it will be row level trigger and 
execute procedure our function. So let's run this. We create a trigger, we returned successfully. Next, let's update. I will update our invoices table and set the uh, invoice ID of equal 3, this uh, row. Let's change, make it true. It was false, as you can see. Let's go quickly, I will just rerun it so you will see that, okay. Our, for example, invoice ID 3, it's false, false. Then here is our query, update 1, query returned uh, successfully. So if I go back quickly here and rerun this, you can see that it's here. But because we have trigger that fires automatically, we see also we see that we have a new entry here. Do you see it? So after creating this empty table, it will be populated automatically because of the trigger associated with the table invoice. And just to give you a quick example, so invoice ID 3, yeah, it's uh, the same as invoice ID here, John Q public 2, dummy customer name, John Q public 2, and then paid on whatever date is, uh, whenever the update happens here. And uh, the final thing I want to touch here is the syntax on dropping the trigger. Because sometimes we might not want to have this trigger fired all the time, right? Maybe we can do some testings and then we just want to disable it. But this syntax is similar to uh, dropping a table, for example, but you drop trigger. You can add if exists as an option, then in trigger name on a table, then either cascade or restrict option. The difference between cascade and restrict is that the first will drop the trigger and restrict will refuse to drop the trigger if any objects depend on it. So if you are sure you want to remove the trigger from your database, no matter what, if, even if there are some dependencies, you just use cascade, cut it out, throw it in the dustbin, get rid of this trigger. Or you can use restrict, it's uh, up to you and I guess it's really case specific. And um, a quick note that in SQL standard, trigger is not attached to a table. So you can simply use drop trigger and then the trigger name. But in PostgreSQL, we need to specify the table. So we drop trigger name. In our case, I just added a specific trigger uh, here on our table invoices. Otherwise, it will not work. And if I quickly run, by the way, if you don't know, you can comment multiple strings using this slash star, star slash. It will comment out multiple strings. But if I drop this, well, let's firstly check that. When I drop it, boom, error syntax in, uh, near invoice. Uh, just a second. Uh, why drop trigger invoice paid trigger? Was it the right name? Trigger. Yes, probably the name was wrong. Drop trigger, query returned a success. After we drop that trigger, I want to quickly showcase that. For example, let's update this invoice ID 1 from a false to true. Our customer will pay. I will just create similar thing. That query is successful, so we just made sure that our customer that had invoice ID 1 paid them, but at the same time, because there is no trigger, we should not see any new entry here. Yeah, so you can see there is no new entries here, because we just dropped our trigger, so it's actually worked. Uh, I need to find the trigger somewhere in this schema, but you see the point of it, right? Here we will conclude our tutorial. I hope it was useful and if you enjoyed it, leave me a comment. Let me know what you would like to see next and if you like the explanations or would like any clarification maybe. Meanwhile, stay healthy and have a great one.